So that's a quick discussion into the Veriflame heater. And, and from here, we wanted to take just a few minutes and talk about uh, fall, you know, uh, preventive maintenance, getting the heaters operational and working early in the year. So the first thing that, that we would recommend that you do to your heater, we will walk into barns and they are typically extremely dirty. You have the full summer's worth of dust and corrosion that's going on in the heater. So you'll have layers of dust on the whole thing. If you could come in with some kind of, uh, of uh, either an air compressor with compressed air that you can blow it out, or we, we know lots of farms have leaf blowers in them, but you need to blow that heater out, maybe even remove the, the deflector off the front and get the air blowing inside where the blower wheel is located and get that totally cleaned out. Once you've got it cleaned, then it's a matter of the next step is to try and light the heater, see what you have going on. So it's important to understand the sequence of how the heater is going to light. And, and most all heaters work off the same, same principles, you know, that the uh, first thing we're going to do is we gotta, we've got to experience airflow. We want to know that, that, that the heater is moving air before we ever apply any gas. So upon ignition, uh, either if you just plug it into a hot outlet or if you want to turn your controller to a temperature where it wants to, to uh, have the heater kick on, then the blower will start operating. When that blower wheel inside is rotating and turning and exhausting air, what will happen is there's a small switch over in the corner called, called the sales switch or the air proving switch. When that blower is moving, it clicks that air proving switch. If that doesn't happen, successfully, the heater will never light because it's looking for airflow. So if it does work, then, then we move on to the next step, which is we want to go ahead and ignite the heater. And you could see it if you were watching where the second step will be the, the silicone nitride igniter will heat up and you'll see it get red inside of that burner compartment. So again, if you don't see that, that redness experience, then you've got to go into that situation uh, and, and experience, check to see what, what you might have wrong if the igniter, for some reason, is not getting power to it. And then once you have that, then the next process is the gas valve will send gas flow to it and ignite. So there's a series of things along, so, so that's the sequence to get the heater started. There's a series of things that can happen that, that can cause it not to light. So like I say, if it doesn't see airflow, that's a problem, it won't light. Right in front of the igniter is the flame probe. The flame probe is one of the first things that we'll see in the fall of the year that it's had all, you know, the, the off season to corrode. So you may have to take the, the, the igniter and the flame sensor, and again, it's, it's a keyhole quarter inch nut driver. You lift that out and steel wool, or, or uh, any kind of wire brush, you can just gently remove the carbon buildup on both of those components. So that would be, after you, you, know, you blow it out every time, that would be the most likely culprit you would see. And you would generally see that if, if whenever the flame lights, if it lights for just two or three seconds and then kicks off, that's a strong indicator that you have a, a, a flame probe sensor that is not functioning correctly, and oftentimes that's, that's uh, caused by, by carbon buildup on that. Additionally, you can have you know, some wiring. You should double check your wiring harnesses throughout to make sure everything is, is powered up along those lines. And then I think the final thing from a, a maintenance standpoint is making sure that you have adequate gas flow. So if the heater lights and you have a poor quality flame, or the flame is really yellow instead of a blue, those are all indicators that we don't really have the adequate kind of, of gas or the proper amount of gas flow. And you may have to call your gas provider or, or measure the, the uh, if you have a manometer to measure the, the gas pressure coming to your heater. But those would be a handful of suggestions to get your season kicked off and have your heaters operating before that first really cold September or October night whenever you're going to be calling for heat in your